Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today we're going to do an introduction to mate. And I'm from the South, so you're going to hear me every once in a while slip up and say mate, but the correct enunciation is mate. And what is mate? Mate is a tag-based, event-driven flex framework. So as opposed to a number of frameworks that you might see out there, like Cairngorm or PureMVC, Mate is specifically tailored for flex, and it will only work in flex, and it heavily uses or heavily depends upon the flex tag system. And, uh, you know, just like many design patterns, it's designed to solve common problems such as separating the service layer from the views and the business logic. And you've certainly heard of stuff like MVC architectures, model view and controller, and business logic talking between the data and the view. So uh, we're going to be looking into this, but what I want to do is investigate why MATE and what are some of the common problems that we always face when dealing with pure MVC architectures. So whenever you talk about a framework, you're really talking about what's called a design pattern. Well, typically, a design pattern is a solution to some common problem. It's not necessarily the best solution, but it's a solution. And here's an example that I often run into is when you want to scale up an application. Typically, when you start some new software project or you've got some new program, it's always going to run well when you run small applications. You're kind of in this area right here where things are smooth. But as soon as you want to scale up the application and do something great with it, then you end up really, in a sense, climbing the mountain. And that's where you really begin hitting your hurdles, such hurdles as maintenance, uh, communication, segmentation, relationship, data handling, etc. So these are all issues that you're going to run into as you do what I want to do, and that's to build enterprise applications, applications that you want to scale up to such that you have 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 users. One of the problems with architectures themselves is that once you uh, actually input an architecture, the... Uh, program itself can become dependent upon that architecture and so one of the goals of MATE was to try to avoid this as much as possible and so we want to decouple relationships based on the flex framework itself and we want to create an MVC uh, written specifically for flex now flash builder and use what's called implicit invocation and dependency injection and there's going to be the two key words when dealing with MATE and we're going to explain what those mean and once again MATE only works with flex it is a tag based system now when it comes to dealing with applications, you actually have a nice little 2D curve here where you're dealing with basically uh, a program that's just total spaghetti code. It's just all one program. And you've seen them out there. They can be two, 4,000 lines of code all lumped into one big class. Or you can chop everything up into a bunch of small classes until everything's got its own class. And that's also unmanageable because there's too many of them. It's hard to keep track of all of them. Another uh, thing that happens is that you can have relationships between your classes and you can have a class that has no relationship or a bunch of fine green classes that have no relationship and they can do nothing or in a sense you can just have like as many possible relationships as the classes allow which for large numbers just becomes parabolic in complexity so somewhere around here there's a sweet spot and that sweet spot is having segmentation yes but having as few relationships as possible. And that's called being loosely coupled. So we want our applications to be loosely coupled. We want to bring the number of relationships down, but still keep some segmentation. Now, why is that? I'm going to explain that right now. It turns out if you start looking at relationships and complexities, you can actually take four uh, classes, for example, and have a relationship between each one. And it turns out there's six relationships. Well, this all kind of falls out of Pascal's triangle. And if you just take this... Uh, row right here, Pascal's triangle, and follow it down, you see for each uh, number, for example, if you have 10 classes all related, you have 45 relationships. And this begins to go up very rapidly when you get to the higher numbers. So uh, you really uh, build up very rapidly, parabolically, when you're dealing with relationships, where segmentation is only a linear process. So in this particular case, uh, as you begin to segment things, the complexity only goes up linearly. But when you build more relationships, the complexity goes up uh, with relationships parabolically and very, rises very rapidly. So actually what you want to do is you want to decouple relationships and bring down that parabolic curve. And so that's why it's so important if you're going to build uh, web systems or even artificial intelligence systems is to have them somewhat decoupled. And the more you decouple them, the, the more they'll be maintainable. I know people that actually sleep on their desk because they just, they've got bad code that they've written. It's not decoupled and everything's... Every class has to be changed, or every view has to be changed when you change one thing, and that's just not good programming. Now, I want to say that decoupling is not always the way to go. There are some programs where you actually need everything very tightly coupled, and specifically when you're dealing with high data rates. You want everything coupled, no uh, room for play here, and data moving as quick as possible. But when you're not, like in websites and artificial intelligence, then you're actually looking at loosely coupled systems, and that's what we're talking about. So. To learn more about computer coupling, uh, it's actually been studied quite a bit. Please go to the Wikipedia address right here. 
we won't go anywhere with this because I actually want to build a loose couple of systems for websites and artificial intelligence. So what are Mate's goals? Well, uh, they want to make the code easy to understand. So this drives uh, software engineers crazy because they want to understand every little thing. And what you really want to do is just wire things together, given that you trust that architecture. So it's not necessarily that you understand everything, but you can use it, and that's easy to use. You want it non-invasive. That means you want to write uh, decoupled applications and reduce uh, dependency on that framework. So you really don't want that framework to appear in every class like it does, for example, in uh, Kirangorm. You have to put the Kirangorm tag and everything. You actually want to decouple from that, get away from that idea, because when you change one thing, you have to change all the classes. Uh, you want to provide... Uh, patterns and tools that make your life easier and in this tag base you can be working with some pretty easy tags that actually do quite a bit of work there's a real need for speed there which uh, Mate will provide flexibility you may not know all the problems so you want to be able to extend the architecture so you can deal with problems that have not been thought of so you want it flexible enough so that you can actually add to it if you need and the framework can grow and you want to extend beyond common uh, problems which and four and five are pretty much the same as I said that this particular architecture is based upon implicit invocation and also uh, dependency injection. Now, implicit invocation is really one of those big words that you want to impress friends and family with at parties. In reality, it just means it's an event-based system, and that's the heart of Mate. The idea behind implicit invocation is that instead of invoking a procedure directly, a component can announce or broadcast it by an event. And sometimes we call this a Hollywood principle. Like, don't call us, so we'll call you. And that's pretty good. So let's go to the next one. Let's talk about the event flow in Flash Builder. And this describes how an event object moves through the display list. The display list is organized in a hierarchy that can be described as a tree. So there's three parts of this particular event flow, and that is the capture phase, the target phase, and the bubbling phase. So, for example, a user will click on a child node in the DOM, and you'll start from the stage a capture mode, which will capture that target and then bubble back up to the stage. You hear about bubbling all the time. It's not complex. This is how it is. Now, we actually want to use this whole idea of events naturally to create something called an event map that Mate will use to loosely couple your system and its past events to other components. So how do we do this? Well, we can create a list of actions for every event, and Mate performs them when the event is dispatched. So from our view, we actually click and we have an event that bubbles up to an event bus. And from that event bus, we actually have an event map. So you're going to be creating a lot of event maps as you uh, work with Mate. And in that event map, you have several handlers that can dispatch and perform events. Here's kind of a larger view of that. Typically, any type of flex program is consistent of a lot of different view components. And getting these components to talk to each other and recognize each other correctly is, of course, one of the goals of Mate. And so you can see these uh, views actually feed into the application, which feeds to the event map, which basically uh, dispatches all the different events to servers and uh, to the business logic. So let's step through the entire process. Basically, uh, in the first process, the view dispatches an event that bubbles up to the event bus. Next, the event arrives to an event handler's block in the event map that is registered to the listener to this event. Then, inside the event handlers, a list of actions is executed in order. In this example, a server call is made. Next, a method on a model manager is executed, setting some data on the manager. And finally, via bindings, the view listens for changes on the model manager and updates itself. So th the great thing about Mate is that it's just so easy to understand and implement. So as opposed to a complex architecture like Pure MVC, you're going to find this a joy, and you're not going to be weighed down with trying to create a, another level of event listener like the notification manager. Another leg that the MVC architecture stands on is dependency injection. And overall, this is a technique that indicates to a part of a program which other parts it can use. So let's just take a look at that real quick. For example, let's take a look at this. In an event map, injectors target where the data goes. Now, an advantage of this over the model locator idea that Cairngorm uses is that all the data is centralized in the event map. So if you have to change something, you just change it inside a centralized place, as opposed to having to go to every view and every class and changing something inside of that. So your system definitely is no longer dependent upon your framework. So you've successfully decoupled, basically, the framework from the code. And basically what the injector does, it says I have something for you and will supply the data that you need. And once again, this is just a tag-based system. You just put your injector uh, tags inside of your event map. Let's wrap all this up. What was the purpose? It was to find our sweet spot.
so we can loosely couple our architecture, have some fine graining, and basically increase productivity and uh, decrease the amount of maintenance we have to do as, as we build and modulize our different flex applications. So basically your classes don't extend from mate and they use the natural event mechanism of flex. You haven't created another level of architecture to make that MVC architecture work. Uh, the business logic is independent of the framework. It decouples from the events and it decouples from the services. And this is fantastic. In the next video, we're actually going to start building some code and you're going to be amazed at how easy it is to implement the MATE framework. Well, thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively and I'll see you next time.